All right, hello everybody and welcome back to the next episode of the Honda K24 swap into my 1988 Pontiac Fiero. My name is Steven Vincent, aka BV Motorsports, and uh, welcome to my madhouse. All right, so let's see where will we have we, what progress have we made since the last video? Well, it doesn't, it's not going to look like it's a lot, but it really is. So let me show you what we've done. Okay. One of the things I want to point out for people who don't really know Hondas, such as myself, and uh, are looking to pick up a K-Series for their swap, a couple of things you need to watch out for. You see this piece right here? If I have a picture of it, I'll, I'll put it in here. But otherwise, this is what Honda calls uh, engine stiffener, which it is essentially a cast aluminum uh flywheel inspection cover that's pretty much all it boils down to but make sure if you get a k24 that it comes with this from the junkyard or the donor car or whatever because if you need to buy that new it's 400 and some odd dollars i think like 450 bucks so that'll hurt okay so for reference let me show you what the ep3 would use this is for a K20, like Civic Si, RSX, something like that. K20 with the five speed. And that is the Honda part number. That's like 20 bucks. So no big deal, but you notice this is just stamped steel where the other one's uh, cast aluminum. All right, so what have we been doing? Well, I've been playing around with lowering the shifter mount. No, it'd be better just to sh I'm putting the camera way over there. It'd be better to show you on the engine what I'm doing and why. If you're going to go turbo and you're going to use the, what's called the Sidewinder style manifold, if you notice, the turbo gets really close to where the shifter cables run. Now the original bracket is this big monster. And if I roughly set it in place, yeah, you see how close? the cables are to the turbo. So what I'm doing is I made a new one that will run these brackets. That one goes over here like so. This one goes right there. And if you notice, that gives us a lot more space between the shifter cables and the turbo. Now for heat management, you really want what's called an air gap and a heat barrier. So what I'll end up doing is yes, the cables will be lowered. Yes, they'll be heat sleeved, but I'm also gonna go see Clyde or the guys at Fabtech. And we're just gonna, on a sheet break, uh, sheet metal break, we're just gonna make a thin like aluminum or sheet metal uh, heat shield that'll basically just be an L shape. And that'll do wonders for blocking radiant heat. And that'll make your shifter cables last a lot longer. So top tip there. So I got to get these squared up and go ahead and tack weld these in place. Make sure I like where everything sits. Then I'll sandblast it, prime it, and uh, paint it. And I'll probably take this over and uh, get the CAD files done up so I can offer the shifter bracket. And then that's one less thing you have to worry about if you're going turbo on your K24A2. So let me get to work. And don't look at the garage. Don't judge me. It's a mess. And believe me, it bothers me so much. There's times where I don't even want to come down here and work because it's a damn mess. And I don't like clutter, but that seems to be my life now. So I've accepted it begrudgingly, but I've accepted it. So let me get to work. All right, here we go. Hello, everybody. <laughs> I'm in some kind of mood today. Today, we are going to tackle the front subframe, get the uh, steering rack, sway bar, the bracing for the front arrow nose, get all that buttoned up. So let me show you what we're about to do. It's 77 degrees today. It is glorious. So what a better day to be down here working because it's going to be like 30s tomorrow. So got to get it while the getting's good. So let me show you what we're doing anyway. All right. Steering rack. The bushings are excellent on my car, but do I even need to say the mileage on my car? Hence why they are all perfect. So, in the powder coat box, we got the brace that I made where the um, water to air intercooler tubes are going to pass through. 
these are the uh, sway bar bushings they're perfect I was gonna replace them with poly but honestly they're they're really nice so I'm not gonna bother those are the mounts for the power steering or let me rephrase that for the steering rack these are the front sway bar brackets these are lowering tabs or supports for the aero nose braces so got to get all that buttoned up the glorious glorious let me get some light extra light on that the glorious um copper vein that we used so that's the sway bar gotta get that mounted and of course we've got the lower radiator shroud and that is the little thin piece that is the brace for the um it's almost like an ass rubberized asphalt um air guides that gm used to duck the air so we got to make sure we get that on correctly i got my little blanket under there and you know what i didn't bring over here yet was the uh, actual front subframe so i should probably go grab that uh i'll see you when i get all this buttoned up all right i've got the front subframe unwrapped as you can see oh it's looking glorious but there is something i want to point out on 88s this and that that's the front subframe bolts will actually be rear subframe so closest to the door i'll show you on the car why gm didn't use like a captured nut on the body to secure this i don't know but it's just this little bitty pocket with a little opening that's almost impossible to get a wrench on to hold this nut while you back out this bolt um i was going to weld in a nut and make sure make it captured but then you think how many times is this ever going to come out so uh damn it looks good all right so let me show you in the car what i'm talking about all right this might be easier on a car that doesn't have the battery tray um the battery moved up front because we get a um this is the bottom of the battery so let me get some light all right so that's the fiberglass tray for the front mounted battery which also acts as a damn air dam for the air coming out of your radiator can you see let me move that hose can you see how tight that is so it is causing all kinds of turbulence which is uh why the headlights pop up even quicker on these cars with the relocated battery so that'll be addressed soon i'll show you what we got an idea for that but anyway there it is that is the little pocket that the nut sets in so again why gm didn't use a captured nut there is beyond me i don't know why they did it that way but it is an absolute pig especially on this side where you've got the steering rack also in the way that's going to make life fun this is a little interesting to get to you got to this is one of the last things you'll disconnect from the subframe again it's a lot harder with the battery up relocated up front so this what we're going to do is we're going to get the steering rack on the subframe and then we're going to work our way lower you know bring the subframe under the car get this one nut attached and the steering shaft into the steering uh, rack once we get those then you can lift it up into the car you can't disconnect that with um the steering rack uh, you can't detach the steering rack here and then lower the subframe you actually have to unbolt everything and then lower the subframe enough to where you can get to that bolt it's a real pain in the ass but it is doable you just got to be a little patient and um, hope that the bolt's not seized so here comes fun let's get to it this part's gonna suck these bolts and the steering rack may be the third worst job to do on an 88 Fiero, but it's got to be done, so let's get to work. All right, next day, would you believe I actually had to fire up the kerosene heater because while yesterday it was 77 degrees, today, 34. 
So, we got a lot done. Let me get back to the whole shifter thing. So this is the new shifter bracket I made up to lower it to give us some more clearance to the, to the turbo. I think I showed you guys. I still have to make the heat shield, but that's it for right now. We'll see how that works, but hopefully it's good. Now today, what am I doing? Well, I got this weird contraption and I'm putting a, I put a degree wheel on there so it can give me some kind of, you know, ballpark on when I'm doing the tubing. Yes, that's right. We're gonna be doing the water to air intercooler plumbing today. But let me show you what I got done yesterday because I was done, I was tired, I was grumpy. I didn't feel like picking up the camera. So let me, let me show you. All right, you remember how I said way back in the day on if I ever met the Fiero designer engineer that made the hinges, designed those, I was gonna kick them right in the balls. Well, now he needs kicked in the balls for some other things. Let me elaborate. <clears throat> you see up, <laughs> maybe you can, maybe you can, up in there, there is a nut back there. And as you can see, I'm touching it with my finger. That, why they didn't use a captured nut there, I'll never know, but it's an 88 thing. That bolt isn't fun. How the steering rack mounts. Well, you see that bellow? It is so stiff. It's a pain in the ass. You don't even want to know how long it took me to get that in place. Now the subframe is in. As you can see, there's a bit of a gap there. I'm still working on because I need to be able to plumb the cooling, cooling tubes through down this channel and up. And then I'm going to run the water to air somewhere along that channel. We'll see how I do, but I know I'm gonna have to cut this a little bit to make room so it can go in and behind the uh, uh, fender liner. Fender, inner fender liner, thank you. Okay, and then we're gonna bring it around and we're gonna try to snake it um, along with the coolant tubes and up and over and through. So that's something I gotta work on. We're getting ready to get, on, get started on that. I got the water to air intercooler heat exchanger mounted yesterday you know just little odds and ends i'm buttoning it all up right now but uh it's all loose because i may have to pull the subframe out which means dicking with that steering rack which yay so let me get to playing with the piping now one of the things i did is here's our aluminum tubing for the water to air but that stuff's expensive, and if I mess that up, I'll be unhappy because then I'll have to order more. So what I did is I went to the local hardware store and got some PCV, PVC pipe that's easier to shape. I'll need heat, but this will act as my template. So we'll get this shaped. I got my angle finder, you know, a Sharpie. I can mark on it, ruler, figure it out, make my template out of this. And then we'll transfer that over to the aluminum piping. You know, like I said, I'd rather ruin one of these or both of these than the aluminum tubing. That's a little harder to get and a little longer to get where I can just run the hardware store and grab that. So I'm going to get to work. I may show you a little bit here and there, or at least just knock out the template and then show you how we're going to transfer it over. All right. So let's get to work. All right, everybody, welcome back to the channel. We are continuing the build on the 1988 Pontiac Fiero with the K24 in it. Uh, got a lot of work done off camera. It actually kind of funny. The car is actually even more apart than it was the last time you saw it, but there is a method to my madness. Uh, let's see where we're at. All right, here's what I need from you guys in this video. I'm gonna show, give uh, Steve a link to this video so we can kind of emphasize how much you guys may or may not want the Honda K swap mounts or K Fiero mounts. So this is what I need from you. I need you to post in the comments below something along the lines of like, hell yeah, big sexy, we want K Fiero mounts. Or, you crazy white boy, you don't put no damn Honda in a Pontiac. You, something along those lines, you know. Just let me know what you guys think about the K swap mounts and uh, if there's a demand for them. We'll make them. So let me show you what we've been working on. I've made some three quarter inch inside diameter 
6061 aluminum tubes that are my coolant crossover tubes for the water to air intercooler system. Got to get these AN fittings TIG welded on. Hopefully Clyde can get that done for me. But we got to get all these. There's the extra ones right there. I drilled them out on the inside so that they'll actually slip over the pipe a bit. Make them a little easier to weld. So... I made these for the 88 and I also have a setup in the rafters for the blur. All right, moving on. Haven't made any other progress here. Um, everything's buttoned up, ready to go. Now, the bolts aren't torqued on the spindle side because obviously you have to disconnect the spindle in order to get the axles inserted. So those are the only things that haven't been torqued. Ordinarily, what I do is after every bolt that I know, you know, and I'm talking like a critical bolt, not like something holding on a fender, but anything suspension engine related, once I torque them, I take a yellow paint mark and I dab the mark, uh, the bolt or the nut just to show me that it's been torqued. It helps me know where <laughs> there might be a problem or if it's just been done, okay? Uh, engine, haven't really done a whole lot, although I am considering doing a remote block for because this is where we get like oil pressure oil temp anything like oil feed anything's gonna come off this one fitting and from what i've read that this fitting will actually start getting a lot of weight and vibration and it could shear off in the block and people are using a short bit of um, a in line and then hard mounting a block like on a firewall or something and then running all your sensors and feeds off of that and that's something i'm probably gonna do let's see shifter bracket that's all looking good um i do need to get one cable ordered which is just a shift the select cable that i have is brand new and it looks like it's going to work out great other than that haven't really done much else on the engine everything else has been done on the car all right i pulled the front bumper off my He's not really my nephew. It's more like a second cousin, but uh, he's got like a nephew to me. So he told he uh, offered to take the bumper and the fiberglass side scoops to school and have the Votech teacher uh, sand and paint match the body panels, and it's going to cost me next to nothing. So uh, I'm going to jump on that and see uh, see how that turns out. You know, at the end of the day, if it turns out terrible, it costs me materials and nothing else. Small donation to the school. So that's a win-win for everybody. So I'm going to drop those off tomorrow. I got them. Yeah, believe it or not, the bumper and the scoops fit in the Fiesta, but the trunk lid does not. That's like... That's still finished in like a red oxide primer. That'll have to be done as well. And then, of course, the lower section of the front fenders will also have to be paint matched and blended. All right. Now, down here. Let me make this light a little bit brighter. Okay, so I'm getting the upper control arm is in its place. Um, I had the lower control arm, but it was actually for the other side. And this whole time I was thinking that these arms were symmetrical, but I think the bottoms actually might have some caster built into them. So I took this one back off. I'm gonna take that over to Steve and just have him verify. Um, but it just looks like it's right here at the ball joint side. It looks like there's some caster built in. So. He's going to have to do some measuring and, and see where we're at on that. Next thing I'm going to start working on, and you should see it maybe in this video. I might split it up to the next video. Garth is going to be here Saturday, and we got to get started on the wiring. Now, I have the Hybrid Racing case Universal K-Series Breakout Harness, which essentially is if you have your wiring all the way from the engine to the ECU, you take this harness and it gives you a relay for the starter, the fuel pump, and one other one. There's three relays. And um, you basically can connect three wires and your Fiero will run with the K-Series. And that's what we used on the blur. Um, I've got to fit up the ECU, but I am going to go ahead and kind of remove this extra bit of metal here. I'm going to cut that all out with the Dremel. And that'll give me a flat surface to mount the ECU, make up an ECU mount. And I'd like to put the relay somewhere on here, but also leave me room in case I need to add another bulkhead fitting for more wiring or pass-throughs. 
I think that would be a good option. Now, once upon a time, I had the power uh, feed from the battery, which is mounted up front by the radiator, run all the way down and up to the C500 junction in the engine bay. And that was run under the car. Well, I've kind of, the more I thought about it, I really don't like that. So I am going to route it inside the car and do a bulkhead uh, pass through for the power wire somewhere in this area. And it's the power wire is going to run up through the car. A lot of cars are done that way nowadays. And I think that's the safest. It's out of the elements. There's no road debris to can bounce up and hit it or anything like that. So that's something I am going to going to work on as well but that's all when garth is here because he's my electrical guy so but i got a lot of cleaning and painting to do here trim this metal it's a lot of work but i'm going to pull the seats out this firewall carpet and uh get on it so let's get to work all right hello everybody this is me from the future so future me the video I'm uh, editing right now for the next K24 swap video, which you've just watched, is running pretty long. Uh, it entails a lot of new work that we've done to the car. Garth just left yesterday, if that tells you anything. So, I'm going to split the video in two, so I need an outro for the video that you're watching now. I had all the suspension buttoned up. We ended up taking it back off because I want to get these A-arms duplicated and be able to offer those, the two A-arms. Front bumper's off, that's, that's over, getting repaired. I think I may have covered that in this video, I'm not sure, but that after I reassembled all that, I had to take it right back off. You see how my bumper support is saggy? These pins are broken. These are easy to get to. These are like seven inches in there. And I don't know how I'm gonna get that sorted out, but I'll figure out something. So I just wanna let you know that I do already have the next video filmed. Gotta do some editing. So I'll hopefully get that out that one out around uh, Thanksgiving. So thanks for watching. If you like what you saw in this video, please consider subscribing. Give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, give me a thumbs down, but at least tell me why you didn't like the video because it will help me improve future videos allegedly. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. We'll see you on the next video.